A physical sunscreen with no white cast? It's more likely than you think. Hello, friends. Welcome back to my channel. I am Ramon. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a very interesting review. A review on a product I've seen hyped up on several different channels, and therefore, it's got me wondering, is it really worth that hype? And that is on the Pareto Comfy Water Sunblock. But before we get into the video, I just want to ask that you hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, hit that notification bell, so that way you are notified every time I post a new video. I have so many series on my channel, sunscreen, skincare, Fenty, Rihanna related, that hit the notification bell so I let you know when I have new uploads. Therefore, become a part of the family. I like new friends. So, why all the hype around the sunscreen and why a whole dedicated video on this? Well, Physical sunscreens are notorious for their white cast. They have very unpleasant formulas. They're often really heavy and greasy on the skin. Therefore, the fact that so many people are raving about this has me very, very interested. You know, I've already played with the other Pareto sunscreens in the line. So now, I have a whole collection. So the Pareto Comfy Water Sunblock has a few claims that we're gonna look at. First and foremost, it's an SPF 50 PA++++. Why it's major. Physical sunscreens based around two main ingredients, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide. In order for you to have that high of an SPF with zinc oxide, you need a really high amount in a formula, which again, often leads to really unpleasant formulation. A lot of times you really only see up to SPF 30-ish on physical sunscreen. So SPF 50 is actually pretty uncommon. PA rating, the four pluses is UVA protection. Um, I mean, granted, zinc oxide with the added bonus of titanium dioxide you're gonna get decent uh uva protection but that's really important in sunscreens uva causes the most damage to the skin essential oil free as we know with the Pareto centella level green sun the original one there's a lot of confusion as to why lavender essential oil was included in that formula since fragrance can be irritating and so they made another version that wasn't scented for more sensitive skin but this is adding to the fact that this one also does not no stickiness and light texture that's specifically what we're testing again Purely physical formulas generally don't have the best formulas. 70% water-based formula. It's a big claim around this one. It's allegedly very hydrating, moisturizing. It's not heavy. 100% physical and non-nano sunblock. Nano particles in physical sunscreens. If you minimize the particle size, you are able to have a much more lightweight, thinner formula, but there's a concern with those getting to the bloodstream because they can get into the skin a lot easier. I don't got opinions on that you would need a really high quantity and a really high percentage for a very long time to see any real damage so that's not on my radar also on the bottle a comfortable unscented daily physical sunblock shields the skin from uva and uvb rays it is 70 percent water-based sunblock formulated with sika centella asiatica that gives the skin a moisturized finish without any stickiness and stuffiness I don't know what stuffiness is, but it's on there. It's even for sensitive skin and babies since it does not absorb into the skin. Big claim around this one. Generally, physical sunscreens are great for sensitive skin because most people say it's because they don't absorb into the skin the way chemical sunscreens do. That's the big claim is that this is for the utmost sensitive skin that even babies could use it without any problems, so. One of the claims from the website that I want to specifically call out. It claims it's great for all skin types. Again, it's going to moisturize and keep the, even the most dry skin moisturized and hydrated, but even for oily skin, it's going to sit lightweight and not be too heavy, not too occlusive, it won't clog pores. But the big claim is makeup, which is the whole point of this video is a wear test with makeup. And it claims Pareto Comfy Water Sunblock, 70% water base and core technology, don't know what that means, causes the sunblock to soak into the skin, preventing the makeup from lifting or smearing. You can use the sunblock before applying makeup. So. That leads into the next part, how this video is gonna work. So I'm gonna be doing a three-day multi-factor wear test to see how this sunscreen pairs with both skincare and makeup to see how in itself it's going to last and function as a makeup primer, how it's gonna affect the longevity of makeup throughout the day, as well as how it's going to affect the kind of greasiness and whatnot of my full day wear. Day one is gonna consist of full extensive skincare routine under a simple base. Day two is going to consist of a very, very minimized simplified skincare routine over a simple base. And then day three is going to be a very, very minimized skincare routine again, but with a more heavy duty long wear base. And that's basically just going to go into seeing how with those different variables, the sunscreen is going to again affect makeup, affect the wear of the makeup and affect the overall look with products that I know how they work, know how they function, and also to see how the sunscreen plays with makeup. So let's get into the wear tests. Day one, obviously it was the intro into me trying out the formula, me playing around with it. So. In order to see the testaments of whether or not this has the white cast, I first applied a very, very generous three layers to one side of my face. In order to obtain a very even, consistent, uniform film of ample UV protection, 
I usually do three layers of sunscreen. You need to wear about a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen in order to get the recommended UV level on the bottle. Surprisingly, there was no white cast. I had to look at the footage the next day, but I realized, oh, like this is sitting really nicely on the skin in terms of the white cast factor. But the big thing I was also testing was how it wore with facial hair. If you are an individual that has a beard, you would know certain sunscreens, especially if they're really rich, get caught in your beard and they, it's not cute, it's really not cute. And so I was really testing how in my hairline, in my beard, in my eyebrows, in my mustache, how that sunscreen kind of played. And with that one side, it, it wasn't cute. That might be user error in how I applied it because I did go very generously since I was kind of playing around with it but it did collect. But with how I built it up, I was also seeing how the sunscreen itself would layer up on itself. And again, it looks great. It felt really hydrating and lightweight, but it was also on my face, like my face felt moisturized and it wasn't greasy, but it felt heavy and that it was tacky. So whenever I moved my face, cause I'm very expressive, I could like feel my skin like kind of sticking to itself. But in its sense, that kind of feels like it would be the same property as like the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. Cause again, that's a formula that is hydrating, but grips makeup. And to me, that was in its way, in a way, a like similar factor of how it could hold on to makeup. On the other half of my face, in order to see how it could be applied differently, I used a method I saw James Welsh use, which was utilizing an air cushion from a little BB cushion compact to apply the sunscreen to better layer it up, but also to better work it into the hairline. And it did work a lot better. I, as you can see, I don't have really anything in my hairline or my beard. And all things considered, the sunscreen did pair really well over the ample skincare. Again, that day I did a face rinse, a toner, a salicylic acid treatment, another toner, a moisturizer, the Dr. Dart Tiger Grass Gel Cream, my Azalea Acid Suspension. And with makeup, I was actually genuinely surprised. The makeup looked almost airbrushed over the sunscreen. The only issue was areas that I had issues applying the sunscreen in the first place, such as my under eyes and underneath my lips, where it was already kind of crusty. The makeup obviously looked crusty on top of it, but everywhere else, it looked seamless. But a big thing was with how the sunscreen was layered and put on my skin, I felt like the makeup was sitting on the sunscreen as opposed to melting into my skin. But I'm going to attribute that actually to how the skincare was underneath it because I put a lot of skincare on. I let that skincare set so there was really no slip underneath the sunscreen and therefore the sunscreen didn't apply the best way it could have. I mentioned the beard and hairline white cast. Makeup can generally remedy that if you take your foundation and your bronzer into your hairline and your beard, which genuinely should be doing to create a very consistent non-mask-like look with your makeup. You really wanna blend that into your hairline. With my actual hairline, it worked really well to take out all the white cast. The excess in my eyebrows and my mustache came out pretty easily with a spoolie, but with my beard, no matter how much product I put into it, if anything, trying to buff in foundation into my beard exacerbated the white cast a little bit more. My boyfriend pointed it out to me. But overall, on an opposite note, what I was really shocked by was my under eyes were not creasy at all. They were actually really, really smooth and I got no product collecting in any of my creases there. Sometimes physical sunscreens cause a little bit of discoloration in your foundation where it makes it look gray or whiter than normal. I had none of that, so. Day one, I was genuinely surprised at how well it wore, even though I was still kind of working through the kinks. Day two, I changed up the skin routine substantially. All I did was a face rinse, some essence to kind of introduce nutrients and hydration into my skin, and the sunscreen on top to just lock it in. I did the sunscreen right after the essence, so therefore I had a nice slip, a nice surface underneath to slide the sunscreen around and really help to apply it in such a smooth, even uh, application. It was flawless, seamless. All the issues I had the day before were completely gone. That day I did a super simple beat as well. That day was just my Fenty concealer buffed over my face with the matchstick and rum to bronze and the cream blush and fuego. The look that day was beautiful, seamless, flawless. The sunscreen, because it had that slip and it applied so well, sat beautifully underneath makeup. So therefore I had no texture issues whatsoever. And by the end of the day, I was a little bit greasy, but again, nothing wore off, nothing looked off and everything looked really, really good. Day three is where I switched things up. While I kept the skincare really, really minimal with just an essence and a sunscreen, I did more full coverage, full makeup, full foundation, concealer, everything. I was doing my Fenty Friday video that day. For that day, I actually primed on top of the sunscreen to see how the primer would play with it did my foundation, my concealer and everything. And it sat beautifully on the skin. There was no weird peeling with the primer, no weird texture issues. And at the end of the day, while I was still greasy as a result of not blotting or anything, the makeup looked effortless. There was no issues. It looks great. So that's the first couple of days I did of the wear tests. Pleasantly surprised at how everything looks. I mean, on camera, I found out through looking at previous days footage that everything looks a lot more airbrushed on camera than it is in person. That's a testament to Fenty and how it wears. But also I'm really comparing the sunscreen to a lot of the physical sunscreens I've used that I did not like. Main point being the drunk elephants, uh, 
umber tint sunscreen or umber sheer sunscreen, whatever it's called. And so pleasantly surprised mainly in how just it holds on to makeup. Things look so flawless on top of it. And I'm still trying to get the bearings on how it works and how it functions underneath makeup to get the best application possible. But overall, I'm still really liking it. I'm gonna give it a few more days worth of wear and testing and I'll come back with a final conclusion. <laughs> We are here uh, basically a few days after the initial onset of testing for the Pareto Comfy Water. And I have some thoughts, I have some notes. Just to kind of preface everything for today, I'm wearing nothing on my face, but we'll have some skincare underneath it, but the Pareto sunscreen and some lip gloss. This is completely bare face, no makeup, no setting powder. This is the sunscreen in itself. And I'm gonna be honest with you, just to like cut to the chase, I'm really gonna give this like a seven or an eight out of 10. It is a really decent sunscreen, period. Let's, let's look at the notes. Overall, basically, if you were to just do a very sheer basic application of this, you would be, I think, pretty set. With me though, obviously I really stress, not even with me, with science, I really stress applying the proper amount of sunscreen. And for me, that's building it up in a few sheer layers. So that way I get the full quarter teaspoon across my face, neck and ears. That way I get that full even film protection across my face. The more I build up, depending on the skincare underneath it, especially the more I notice that, you know, there might be a little bit of uh, blotchiness or a little bit of uh, patchiness with the sunscreen filter. So I find massaging and then patting, pressing really helps to set that down, get rid of that and get rid of all of that patchiness and give you a nice, even flawless like base. For makeup. My boyfriend though didn't have the best experience with it. The first day he did it, it was just like, he looked like he had scabies. He just had like patches of white all across his face. But he himself said, I didn't work it in the way you do. Second time we wore it, kind of similar thing, a little bit less. And I kind of had to recommend to him, go over it with some moisturizer to kind of like reactivate or rehydrate the formula to get it set down. But for him, similar notes. Um, for him, it actually made him like really, really matte. It applied really well under makeup, but it kept his makeup super matte. He didn't have to really set at all besides his under eyes. And he had a really nice flawless base. The issue for both of us is just, and I don't know if you can see it right now with the studio lights, is it's still all up in my hairline. For him, he has even darker, coarser hair than I do. And he, it's very noticeable for him, especially up here. For me, he called it out when we went outside in daylight. He's like, it's in your beard. Like it is in your beard. So that's kind of something you have to work around. If you find that you are having that issue as someone with a beard or if it's getting caught up in your hairline, makeup does remedy that a lot. I mentioned in uh, the first few days of doing makeup, I applied bronzer and foundation up into my hairline, which I think you should do anyway. It helps to eliminate that like mask-like effect, but also create continuity into your hairline. In my eyebrows, I mean, I obviously have it in my brows. I don't mind getting sunscreen in my brows. The richer the sunscreen texture in my brows, it low-key acts like a brow gel. So I actually like to put sunscreen in my brows for that reason. One thing I want to point out over the few days that I did the reviews is I did not blot. I purposely did not blot throughout the day as just a way of saying like how moisturizing and how hydrating the sunscreen was to see how long it wore and just see like the overall finish at the end of the day. And I got greasy. It didn't necessarily break up the standard way physical sunscreens do break up on me, but I did notice some breakup. But I want to attribute that breakup throughout the day to the fact that I wasn't blotting, therefore I had excessive oil production, therefore that oil was causing the breakup in the sunscreen and the makeup. Over the last week I've been trying it out, I've noticed no adverse skin effects, no irritation, no um, reactions to the sunscreen at all. My skin again is great, it's nice, it's radiant, it's flawless for the most part, ignore this. And it washes off really easily. I mean, I always, always, always double cleanse. There's no questions about that, no exceptions to that rule but it washed off easy. I didn't find I really had to go in extra hard or anything with anything extra. I mean, physical sunscreens are known for being a little bit easier to get off. So yeah, Perito, comfy water sunblock. She's that bitch. Recommend. All the Perito sunscreens are amazing, but for a, for a physical sunscreen, as someone of color, as someone who has more tan skin, I actually have not found a physical sunscreen that I've loved as much as this one. So yeah, give it a shot. Worth a try, Ramon approved. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. If you like this kind of video, if you really felt that this was worth the view, give it a like, hit that subscribe button. I have a lot more content coming your way, but if there's anything specifically you want me to review in a similar manner, let me know. These kinds of wear tests are things that I personally look for. Someone who has a beard, someone who has tan skin, someone who needs to know how things work with makeup. And therefore I wanna bring that kind of content to you. So let me know in the comments below if something you wanna try or something you wanna see me review in the same manner, because I'm more than happy to do that for you. Thanks for watching, guys.
bye.